Throughout the season of creation, we are practicing acknowledging our personal and collective relationships to the land on which we gather, and the land that has sustained us through our lives. We recognize the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples on this land. We acknowledge that the land on which we live and work is the traditional territory of the Ojibwe of the Fort William First Nation, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. In the beginning, the spirit moved over the deep, new life daily unfolding at God's call, darkness and light, good, skies, land and seas, good. The earth and all that fills it, plants and rocks, the fins, the feathered, the furry, good. At the last humankind in God's image, very good. Yet we have failed to draw from that goodness and care for God's creation. Forgive us, God, for the ways we have exploited earth and its creatures. We have misunderstood our calling to be protectors of God's creation. Forgive us, God, the ways we exploit the earth and its creatures. We long for new relationships of God's creation that has been entrusted to us. Help us, God, to make a new community with all that lives alongside us. May the merciful God who calls us to tend earth and all its creatures deepen our knowledge of creation's interweaving so that our lives are shaped in wholeness and peace with all living things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand to sing the gathering song as we're able. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, number 859. Number 859.
When we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us. That with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to God's Word. First reading is from Habakkuk 1, uh, 1 4 and 2 1 to 4. A reading from Habakkuk. Injustice and violence in the time leading up to the Babylonian exile move this prophet to lament. How can a good and all powerful God see evil in the world and seemingly remain indifferent? God answers by proclaiming that the righteous will live by faith. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise, so the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me, and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Thank you, we will now sing um, hymn 673, Who's Almighty Word. He is encouraged to exercise that faith with the help of the Holy Spirit. 
Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ the Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, day, night and day, recalling your tears. I long to see you so, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in, within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our own purpose and, and, um, and been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed um, herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that, that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now rise for the gospel acclamation. of servants whose actions are responses to their identity rather than work seeking reward. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, Say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Our readings today each speak of what possessing faith means. The prophet condemns the proud saying that their spirit is not right in them. If it were through their displays of faith, all would see them as righteous, God-fearing people. Because of this, Paul commends Timothy for his sincere faith, living in him just as it did in his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. The apostle encourages him to rekindle this gift of God, so by faith, he will be able to live in a spirit of power and love and of self-discipline. 
This connects us to this passage from Luke. As it begins, we hear the disciples asking Jesus for more faith. From each of these, it appears faith in great quantities is what we need to follow Jesus most closely and to have favor in God's sight. How then do we do this? And what happens when we don't succeed, when our faith seems weak or missing? And Jesus' answer, there continues to be good news for all who seek to live by faith. Timothy, I believe, also wondered about this. Here was his great teacher, encouraging him to continue in the journey of his foremothers, to be full of power, love, and self-discipline. Unsaid is that while his mom and grandma might have been heroes of the faith, many times Timothy feared he could not live up to their examples. Paul's words hint that this young disciple could not see himself moving forward as a believer had moments when he felt weak, ashamed, unable to live out the gospel message. He felt afraid to share it, having suffered for doing so. He needed more faith. These feelings continue among those who seek God. So Lutheran pastor Jenny Sung confessed last week, Sometimes I wish I had more faith. I wish I could believe the power I hold as a person who is baptized and called beloved by the creator of the universe. Every day it feels hard to believe I have any power. It seems even the power I hold I misuse or drop on the ground like a careless child. Like her, I've also known moments when my supply of faith, my trust in the grace of God, my feeling of being a lot surrounded by the love of Christ seem to be running on empty. I suspect that many of us experience those times when we feel the Spirit calling us to share the good news. And yet we cannot find the power or the resolve to do so. We watch modern-day Christians like Lois and Eunice and say, Wow, I can wish I could be like them. Like Sung wrote, This doesn't mean that we are denying that we are children of God. It just means we don't see a way forward. Hanging on as quiet believers, we ask God, increase our faith. Give us the power to be who you want us to be. It can also seem that many times the Creator seems slow in answering or does not respond with what we feel we need. In the verses immediately before our reading from Luke, the apostles, those sent out by Jesus to share the good news, had questioned him about how many times they should forgive someone who has wronged them. In true Jesus style, he responded back with an impossible number. Seventy times seventy. Jew Jewish thought imagined such a figure to imply always or infinity. So then Jesus is calling them to practice never-ending acts of forgiveness. Understandably, the disciples are more than a bit overwhelmed. Publicly, they cry out, increase our faith. Inwardly, like us at those moments in our lives, they are really thinking, Jesus, you've got to be kidding. They're also hoping two things. First, that Jesus isn't reading their minds like he is able to do. And secondly, even if he is, that he tells them 
He was just joking. But it doesn't seem to be the latter. Jesus replies, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea. And did would obey you. Wrestling with Jesus' words here, Sung came up with another question. What if Jesus is encouraging us to see beyond measurement? In a culture where we have a whole grocery stall aisle for salad dressings, maybe less can be more. Perhaps a seed has more possibilities to offer than a full-grown tree. Inside each seed is the potential and hope of growing and dreaming. In a full-grown tree are memories and glory years. A seed believes it still has everything to give. Perhaps a full-grown tree is like a full-grown human, more careful to assess the emotional bandwidth and capacity it has to stretch and grow. If this is so, rather than fearing about the shortcomings of our faith, or about making excuses for why we don't measure up, and hear Jesus here calling us to work with what we have. Another writer suggests Jesus is encouraging the apostles and us to see that even if we feel we only have a mustard seed of faith, God has given you everything you need. Some concludes, so often we compare our abilities and growth beside others who are growing. Maybe God is asking us to knock it off, to notice the places and spaces we are planted to grow. As beloved children, grace, mercy, and peace have been given to us all in Christ. Even as we pray for our faith to be rekindled, we go forward to serve. In the company of Timothy, Lois, Eunice, and all who have received the mustard seed of faith. Although we might be seeds, taken together we become a field, full of blossoms and life and beauty it is enough to change the world. Amen. Let us stand as we're able and sing the hymn of the day, Lord of all hopefulness, number 765.
Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. scattered grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good <coughs> creation. We respond to each petition, God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for your holy church in every place, and for those who serve following the example of Christ including the congregations of Trinity in Bergland and Zion in Fort Francis. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, including Atlantic Canada, the South United States, and the Caribbean, relieve those afflicted, affected by floods, wildfires, Droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. God of grace. Yeah. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace. Yeah. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, and for those who ask for our prayers, including Micah, Ray, and Eleanor, Elizabeth giving thanks for her recovery, Karen and Glenn, Keith, Matthew, and June, Ron, Judy, and Harvey, Art, Grace, and Eleanor, Audrey, Daniel, and Howard, Michael, Karen, and Jean, Jerome, Donna, and Renee, Lawrence, Larry, and Jim, Marita, Nick, and Kathleen, Chris, Donna May, and Mike, Elaine, Catherine, and Susan, Linda, Rayland, and Nell, Taylor, Jeff, and Dorothy, God of grace, hear our prayer. For all who pray this day, listen to our silent prayers as well as those we speak. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. God of grace. Amen. For Erica and Mike, married yesterday, that your love continue to flow through them, helping them on their shared journey. God of grace. Amen. In thanksgiving that you have abolished death, and for the saints who have died, bring us to eternal life with you. God of grace. Amen. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to serve all creation. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Just a few words about our sharing of communion today. A reminder that we continue with the practices outlined in the bulletin. And for the children, if they only receive a blessing, just indicate that to me as you come up, and I'll come and offer those words to them. Also, people have been asking, because we're still eating the bread, consuming the bread in the pews, wait until after the invitation to come forward, and then I will say the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you, and that is when you may eat the bread and then start to come forward. And if you're watching online, when the presiding minister says, the body of Christ given for you, we welcome all to take and eat a piece of bread, remembering giving thanks for the promises of God given us in Christ Jesus. And please also do so taking a glass of wine or other liquid when the presiding minister says, the blood of Christ shed for you. We begin the great thanksgiving on page 107. The Lord be with you.
Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road, that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to receive God's blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Our sending song, Let All Things Now Living, number 881. Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.